One year ago this weekend, the city of Charlottesville, Virginia, was the scene of a white supremacist rally and counter protests. It led to violence and the death of 32 year old Heather Heyer. What has changed in Charlottesville and what has not is the focus of many community events this weekend. We're joined now from Charlottesville by Nicole Hemmer, an assistant professor at the Miller Center at the University of Virginia and host of the podcast A12, which deals with the events of Charlottesville and the history behind it. Thanks for joining us. So let's talk about really what happened in that year since. Yeah, so in the year since, there has been a lot of focus on trying to figure out, first of all, what went wrong last year? Why was this event that was known about well in advance? Why was it so violent? Um, why was there so little containment of it? Um, but then also really a much broader push on issues of white supremacy, racism, economic inequality in the city, and a real effort to try to address some of those underlying issues that have kept Charlottesville sort of on a knife's edge for a few years now. Well, one of the things that uh, you know, even the, the city that looked at it and the reports that came out afterwards point out was that while we all focused on the Confederate statue and the specific event, this has been a kind of a long time building last year, last summer. That's right. Uh, locally, last summer is known as the Summer of Hate because there were months of white nationalist rallies and protests in the cities, in the city, and there was a lot of effort by anti-racists and other activists in the city to try to figure out how to most effectively counter that. But from May 13th, when Richard Spencer, who's a white nationalist, held the first um, torchlight rally here at the statue of Robert E. Lee um, through to August 11th and 12th, there was real work at trying to counter this coming mm -hmm. set of protests, but also to counter smaller protests throughout the, the summer. So what are the changes that have taken place? I mean, there's kind of on two levels, the changes, the preparations for this specific weekend, and then the kind of more systemic and long-term changes. Right, so what we're seeing here this weekend is, um, it's quite a tense atmosphere. Um, there are lots and lots of police as there were last year, but most of the downtown mall, most of the university is shut down. So there's a real sense that everything needs to be stopped beforehand. There's actually been a lot of uh, legal work done to ensure that this year doesn't look like last year. Um, so part of that is that white nationalist groups have entered into an agreement with the city not to come back in groups of two or more with weapons. So that has made the city a little um, safer in a sense this year. There's also been continuing work to try to do a better job at telling Charlottesville's history. I mean, the, the statues of the Confederate soldiers here in the city only tell one part of the city's history and not really um, the, the truer story of the city's history, which is that at the time of the end of the Civil War, Charlottesville wasn't a, a city conquered, but it was a city liberated. 52% of the population was enslaved at that time. So people have been working pretty hard to try to bring more of that history to the city, including bringing back a monument to um, Charlottesville's victim of lynching. Hmm. All right, Nicole Hemmer from the University of Virginia joining us via Skype today. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me.